Hi guys, Rodney Walker here of Grant Central USA, and I am excited to bring you a wonderful winner. Yes, a winner. And that would be none other than Miss Kayla Bay. She has a wonderful story. So welcome, Kayla. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Rodney. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm super excited about bringing you to our listeners today because Kayla, you have an incredible story and you were a fantastic student in the Rise and Star program. And your journey just inspires me even recalling it. But I'm looking forward to sharing it today with our listeners. Kayla, let's start from the very beginning. Just let people know where are you from originally and how did this whole interest in grants come about? Yeah, sure. So um, originally I'm from a place called Hot Springs, Arkansas. And, um, you know, growing up there was great. And uh, fortunately for me, I was able to travel quite a bit. I was a, a college athlete and played basketball and ran track. And so um, after college, I kind of bounced around and, and moved around a bit. I just had this, um, I don't know, I think because of the traveling so much with, with sports, it really stuck with me as an adult. So um, I ended up in Dallas and, and then uh, soon after that, I was in Georgia for a moment. And then when you and I met, I happened to be in upstate New York, in Syracuse, New York. And during that time, um, this is um, obviously, you know, pre-COVID, right? Um, I was working at a nonprofit and I loved what I was doing. I enjoyed the work. Um, I, I saw how my leadership team was able to affect and transform so many applicants, so many people in the community. And I was like, wow, you know, to me, I was just on the outside looking in like they're writing grants and then they're getting awarded, you know, this funding. And then they, they're, an, they're applying it to these programs and people are getting, you know, jobs and you know, they're, they're finishing school and it, it was literally unlimited resources um, on how it was affecting and making a huge impact in the community at the time. And so, you know, one day I took my, uh, took my boss aside and I was just like, wow, you know, what do I need to do in order to learn how to do what you're doing? Because I want to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, I had a little pushback, Rodney. You know, she wasn't, um, you know, so um, eager to help me because, as you know, you know, once you kind of, you know, pass the baton off to, you know, someone who's younger and, you know, maybe has a, a, a bigger reach or more influence, it really kind of um, poses the threat of them being replaced. And that's exactly what I experienced. Um, and I was kind of bummed about it. So I went home and I was like, man, you know, I don't want her job. <laughs> you know, I just want to, I just want to learn how to do what she does. And this is a true story. So <laughs> random. Um, I got home and I was on Eventbrite and I was just, I was just on there looking for things to do with my son for the weekend. Um, and all of a sudden your Grant Central USA popped up. It said, you know, introduction to grant writing. And I thought, no way, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about ways that I can get introduced to this particular industry and how to help the community. And then all of a sudden you pop up. And so that's when I reached out to you and then the rest is history as they say, right? Um, but let, let me back up a little bit because there's a, um, a little bit that I'm kind of um, moving past in terms of the hardship, right? And some of the things uh, that I had to overcome in addition to my boss not really wanting to help me. And that is that, you know, I'm a single mother of one. Um, and at the time, my um, my living situ situation was stable, but my income, my work, I didn't have steady work. I was constantly looking for opportunities to grow. Um, you know, my degrees in criminal justice, I minored in legal studies. Um, 
you know, I've, I've worked in insurance. I've been licensed uh, as a certified insurance agent and producer. Um, what else? I've done so many things. I've worked as a paralegal, you know, in a law firm. And when I stumbled across this nonprofit opportunity, it, it wasn't, you know, the best paying job, but it's the fulfillment. It mm -hmm. was me being able to help hundreds of people, you know, and I just thought that was so cool. And even though I had no experience and no background in it, I took a chance on myself. And luckily, just out of just, you know, sure alignment of the universe, I logged on to the Eventbrite app and then you popped up. <laughs> yeah. And so I was just like, this, you know, what are the chances? And once I finished the program, I initially wanted to become a consultant and do my own thing. And I remember you very clearly telling me, hey, you know, you have options. You know, once you complete this course and this program and you get your certification, you can either go do this solo, you can, you know, go work for someone and still have uh, the ability to make that impact that you're looking for, that fulfillment, to be able to help as many people as possible. And uh, fortunately for me at the time, like I said, guys, I was I was living in Syracuse and I was I was upstate New York and, uh, you know, they passed some laws, um, a few things that didn't really align with my household. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> um, and because of that reason, I had to make a really difficult choice to relocate. And uh, this is one of the conversation, conversations you and I had. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm thinking about Austin. And uh, you were like, you know, that's my old stomping ground and this, that, and third. And I, I said, yeah, I think I'm going to seriously be looking at relocating there because uh, I like the area. You know, it's, it's uh, more my speed. It's a really eclectic you know, vibe, anybody who's been in, you know, the heart of Austin know that this is a special place for very special people, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, not to mention it's a growing tech hub. Uh, I consider this the Silicon Valley of the South. And, and so do a lot of people just because of, you know, Tesla, Dell, um, you know, Amazon. I could just go on and on with all the, you know, huge tech companies that have headquarters here. Yeah. And so that's what I set my sights on. And I think um, something that's really important to take away is to have a plan A and to stick with it. Because if you if you don't have a B and a C and a D, then all you have is plan A to fall on. And, and that's exactly what I did. I stepped out on faith. I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. I knew that I acquired the skills from you and your program to be able to um, win grants and to really just go after my wildest dreams <laughs> and it's it's almost you know you hear people tell this story and and the fact that i'm now in that position and i'm it resonates with me that i went from you know having no money no income um unemployed with a child right huge responsibility um and then to really just step out on faith and say you know what I'm going to go to this place and I'm not going to let anything stop me. And mm -hmm. I may get a hundred no's, but all you need is one yes. Right. Exactly. And fortunately for me, I was able to um, apply to this, um, this amazing company. First of all, let me just really quickly tell you how I came to get to this company in the middle of a pandemic, by the way. All oh. right. <laughs> so, so the irony of this story is as I was searching very diligently, I mean, looking for a job is a job. Everybody knows that, right? As I'm searching day in and day out, you know, I'm, I'm filling out all these applications. I finally come across an opportunity. I have a first round interview, then I have a second round interview, but it's all over Zoom. Okay. Okay. So I've, I, at this point, I've never met any of these people in, in person. So um, they look at my resume. They're happy. They're most interested in my grant writing certification. Wow. This happens to be a tech company and a consulting firm who basically is a vendor, right? 
for other companies, K through, uh, K through 12 school districts, architectural companies, construction companies. We are the liaison between these companies and they basically consult us out. And so they were looking for a grant writer and it just all worked. So <laughs> I started in April of 2020. I have yet to meet my boss. I've yet in person, oh, wow. <laughs> I've yet to meet, you know, team members. <laughs> I've been in my office two times in 10 months. Wow. Um, and I work from home. I'm in the comfort of my own home. I feel safe with my son being here. He's learning from home and it is the best possible situation <laughs> that I could have ever imagined for myself coming from the situation that I was in prior to this. Oh my, my, you said a lot. And I got so many different questions I have for you, but it's really fascinating because I had the pleasure of being with you at different stages of this journey and to see those different toss terms, ups and downs, and to see you where you're at now and to see this ideal situation, because this is the first time that I've had an opportunity to hear this other half of the story of what has happened, which is awesome. So tell me this, what, with all that happened along the way on this journey, how did you muster up the courage and the faith and the strength? Because there were some low lows and we're talking right now, we remember, I remember some of those low lows. What did you do, Kayla? Because I believe our listeners, some may be facing some similar challenges. And what did you do to be able to press through all of that? I'll tell you, believing in yourself, you know, the, the faith of knowing that you're equipped, you were born with every single thing you need to survive and to thrive. It's your birthright to live the life and the dreams that you want. Um, discipline is going to be the second most important thing. Um, getting up really early in the morning. And, 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 you know, this isn't for everybody. Everybody's not a morning person. However, if you want to get up early or you want to stay up late, whatever you choose to do, you just have to put the work in. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a huge believer in visualizing and manifesting. I meditate very often and mm -hmm. I have a spiritual journal that I write in each day, every morning, um, you know, just immediately. It's a habit now. It's something that I don't even think about. And, and, and honestly, I actually have two of them. Um, I have one that is just kind of for my professional career in life. And then I have, you know, one that's for me personally, you know, where I want to see myself. And I really honed in on what I wanted my future to look like and what steps I needed to take to get there. So you can't cheat the system. You know, you can't cheat your way to the top. <laughs> We're all taking the stairs. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, somebody being lucky or any of that. You know, it's where the opportunity meets you being ready and putting in that hard work and then things fall into place eventually. And in the moment, it does not feel like there is a, a bone to choose from, okay? I mean, it, it, there, it, it's just, it's so, but however, okay? You literally have to dig, you have to dig deep down, so far down in your soul and stay the course and believe in yourself and keep practicing and keep wanting to build the life that you want and it will eventually happen. And I know it's so cliche to say, <laughs> it really, really is. It's so cliche, but it's the truth. It, it, it's the truth because guys, I'll tell you, I was in a very, very, very low space. I really was, but I didn't let it overcome me. I didn't turn to negativity and, and uh, you know, codependency because that's something that's also very easy to do, right? If things aren't going your way, you know, you have limited funds, you, you know, you maybe can't do things that you normally would, or you even want to, the desire to. 
And mm -hmm. that's when you really have to get the most focused that you've ever been in your life to pull yourself out of it. Wow, that's awesome. I told y'all she was a, a little powerhouse. She was a fighter. <laughs> So uh, that's exciting. And you did it. And I love that. And then you were doing the course, going through the training. I remember like it was yesterday and you were grasping the concepts and really owning the concepts and, and working with it. And then it landed you eventually after you did a number of other things into the role that you are at now. Now, how much of that information that you learned back then have you been able to put into practice with your current current role? And tell us more about what that experience as a day-to-day -day grant professional now looks like with your life. Yeah, sure. Um, I use everything. I use everything you taught me. I'll tell you, it's um, you know, listening is 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 an important skill, right? Because if someone has a template. Um, that you could even go as far as to say that's foolproof, you know, following directions, following the guidelines, you know, being a grant writing professional is very tedious work and you have to be very particular and specific. You have to be very focused and pay attention to details. And so I think your programs and your templates and just the exercises or homework assignments, all of those little things all come into play with what I do now. And so um, I'll give you an example. Um, I, uh, my, most of my day to day is basically reaching out, um, looking for leads, but also making sure that I'm uh, researching and finding data to put within these proposals. So they call them RFPs, which is a request for a proposal or an RFQ which is a request for qualifications. That all really means the same thing. It's just kind of dependent on the, you know, the entity that you're working with, but they're all proposals, right? So don't kind of get hung up on the verbiage, but um, you know, it's same thing. You know, we're looking at finances, we're looking at the record keeping, we're looking at organizational charts, team members, um, the roles that they play. Um, we're looking at what this company is offering, what they're looking to do with the funding. Um, it's all very synonymous with exactly what you teach. And again, having a template and following instructions is something that has gotten me to where I am. And I just, I can't thank you enough, Rodney, because you single-handedly changed my life. And I know I had a lot to do with it, not giving up, having that tenacity, right? And that discipline and that go-getter mentality. And I've always had that, but to start something I've never had any experience with, um, just the love of writing and poetry and things like that, I think maybe help resonate with me. But mm -hmm. being a grant writer, I've never, I've never thought about doing it. And it's intimidating, to be quite honest. When you open up a proposal and it has 50 pages and 75 pages, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's enough to kind of scare you off. But right. what I want people to take away from that is that you're leaving money on the table mm -hmm. that can literally changed the lives of so many people. And, and it reminds me of when I was working for that nonprofit in upstate where I saw how the funding was impacting the community. People were getting new clothes and, and they mm -hmm. felt confident and they had, you know, job interviews. You know, these are people that could, you know, that were out of work for years and years and years getting interviews. Wow. And it just, it, it made them feel so joyful and it, it lit a fire under me to where I was so determined to figure out what I needed to do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in order to help more people. So it's, um, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm overjoyed. I really, really am. That's awesome. And, and you're doing it. And I'm, I'm so happy to had a small part in it to be able to come alongside of you because now you're realizing your dreams and you're doing that and helping more people and taking all of those gifts and talents that you have to bring those resources to more people. That's awesome. How many would you say proposals have you had to prepare since you've been with this company now approximately? 
Oh, wow. Oh, that's a good question. So I've been at this company about 10 months. Um, give or take, I'll say I'm doing maybe three proposals a month, maybe a little more than that. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on the low end. So I'll say, um, I'll say 30. Okay. And, and these are, are what, what are the sizes? Because I know different proposals vary. Those foundations, maybe eight to 10 and those government proposals can be quite massive, massive as you've already kind of alluded to, but what are the yep. sizes of these typical proposals that you're working on? Yeah. So, um, these are, these are huge proposals in a matter of 10 months, I've been able to write over a hundred million dollars in grants. And this is an estimated number, but it's because of, you know, I, I am in Texas and the school districts here are larger seems like than other areas <laughs> around the world. And, um, so because these districts are so big, they need, you know, technology and audio uh, studios and, and they're looking to renovate and there's additions to gyms and I could just go on and on and on. So in addition to the K-12 space, um, there's also construction companies and architectural companies that we work very closely with. Now, mind you, this is a technology firm that I work for. So okay. we are uh creating and implementing proposals so we can expand their technology budget so then they could then bring us on to come in and do assessments etc things that we need to do to get get that completed um but as far as the extent of you know how large or small these are million dollar proposals um there uh, most recently there was a a, a bond passed here locally in the area. And these bonds are anywhere from two to $10 million a bond. And this is for each school district. So we're talking a massive, massive amounts of money um, that are gonna impact the lives of all these kids, um, especially um, you know, during the times that we're in with the pandemic, um, you know, transitioning to technology and online learning e-learning, um, hybrid learning. I mean, you can go on and on and on on how technology has impacted us and really forced itself on us. You know, yeah. whether or not we're tech savvy or not, we've learned to be, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Wow, that is really exciting. And with all of those different grants, you're doing, you're writing for them. And I know those, since they're government grants, those tend to take, those can take, a year and sometimes even longer than a year to hear back from. Have you guys had a chance to hear back from any of those potential funders yet? Or is it still in the, the cycle? Yeah, so um, I'll be honest, they do a great job of kind of updating and, and awarding those uh, pretty quickly. I would say, honestly, anywhere from three to six months. And I know you talk about that in the program, that's kind of the timeline, but you can go anywhere from three three months to 12 months before you hear something back. And it's important not to be discouraged and to also let the people know who you're writing the grants for to be patient because it is a strenuous process and it's not something that you're just gonna get you know, an immediate answer for. Um, and unfortunately you don't get awarded all the time. So yeah. even if I you know, apply to 10, I may only get five or six or I may get two or three. So it's really one of those things that's up in the air but it's important to stick to that template it's important to be very specific, stick to the criteria, the requirements, making sure all the documents are signed, notarized, uh, literally down to the dot <laughs> of what they're asking for references. You need to make sure that it's so specific and, and that you are, um, you know, you are meeting the standards and the requirements of, of what the grant and the proposal says. Wow. Well, I know, I know that you are doing a great job because you were one of the best students that I've had. And I don't just say that lightly, you were. So I know you're doing a great job. Tell me this, you've been able now to realize a lot of the things that you were hoping for. And I know there is this other part that is also an interest, your other side hustle, the whole beauty industry part, because when mm -hmm. you first came to me, you told me about that as well. Mm -hmm. What does that look like today? And tell me a little bit more about what you're doing in that space as well. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> I always just have so much going on, right, Rodney? So uh, hey, this, in, the, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of me, ha you know, being in the lowest period of my life, guys, 
I had the bright idea to formalize a company <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I was like, you know what? I have to keep myself busy or I'll go crazy. So I decided to go ahead and create and launch my own personal company called Instant Beauty LLC. Uh, Instant Beauty is an e-commerce beauty interior design and personal stylist company. Um, I offer consultation services um, in addition to uh, beauty products. And oh. it's still in its uh, infancy stages. Um, I just launched my website November of 2020. So still very brand new. Um, and I'm still working out the, the kinks and, you know, redesigning and, and updating my website and just playing around with it. It's really a hobby that I wanted to really craft and hone in on outside of my professional career as a grant writer. It's good to have things that keep your interest in things that you really are passionate about. And for me, self-care is so important. And I think we all are getting a just, you know, a, a taste of that being at home and being confined to the house, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you have a little bit more time to wear your, your facial cream. Or, you know, you have a little bit more time to, you know, just relax in the bathtub. So for me, I wanted to really emphasize and shed light on that um, because I do come from that type of background in terms of fashion. Um, I've, I've been modeling before. I've worked on uh, editorial photo shoots. I've been cast in uh, movies as extras. And so I do have that entertainment beauty industry side of me. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to kind of expand on it, honestly. So, uh, and, th and then also my sister, I have a, a sister, we're about 15 years apart. She was, um, she did hair for about 30 years. Okay. And I was lucky enough for her to do my hair every week. <laughs> nice. And so you can imagine, you know, the value and the knowledge that I was able to kind of take with me in terms of that. And, and that all encompasses just the beauty regimen. And, and this is not just for women. This is for men, too. You know, we want to make sure we're you taking care of, of my our hair? Skin. I mean, what, what can you do around here for a bald-headed man? <laughs> but you know, we could put a mask on it, right? <laughs> something, something, all right. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a it's just always been a dream of mine and something that I wanted to to start for myself. And so I finally launched it and got it off the ground. And I feel great about it. I feel good. That's awesome. And I love that you take action on those things that you want to do. And I, I wonder where did it come from? Did it come from all of the stuff that you did when you were in sports, upbringing, a combination of all of that, or what? Because I think sometimes so many people get sidelined when they don't get something immediately or they want to do something, but they don't really take the action to do it. Mm -hmm. But what would you say that something was for you or is it a combination? What, what does that look like? Yeah, for sure. Definitely think it's a combination of things. Um, my mother was a hard worker. You know, she's retired now, thank God, but she worked her butt off. And, um, you know, I, I would go to my father's for the summers and he was more relaxed and a little bit more, you know, kind of letting me do my own thing and figure, figure my way. You know, he would let me kind of do things on my own. Uh, but my mom was just such a hard worker. She instilled that in me. I saw her hustling. And so um, as an athlete, um, you know, you have to be very determined and disciplined to, you know, stay in shape, to, you know, look at tapes, you know, doing things in the off season. For me, um, you know, I was very fortunate to work really hard. I, I played up um, all of my career. I would always play up at the next level. And mm -hmm. Uh, the reason why I was able to do that is because I was in the gym before every everybody else, right? Uh, yeah. And even as a post player, you know, typically they get the rap for, you know, being the slower ones on the team, right? We could say that. Um, they're not maybe as quick and, and fast as the point guards and the other players in the positions. However, I knew that if I could increase my speed, I would have an advantage over another girl in my position. Okay. And so 
uh, I just, I've always been a hard worker and that's all that I know. I'm also highly competitive. I want to win, right? Exactly. Um, it, it's hard to beat somebody who never quits, Rodney. Exactly. You're <laughs> right. You're right. And I'm so glad you're not a quitter. It's like, hey, you got to figure a way how to win and keep on going until you do win. And that's what winners do. And you definitely have, have done that, which is cool. Okay, let's we get ready to wrap up. I know you've got, I want to point people to you and have them be able to connect with you and yeah. get a chance to see some of the things that you do. Cause you have some products. Do you have products and things of that nature already? Yeah, on this yeah, I sure do. Let me show you. I have my, one of my business cards here. Take a look at that. Look at that. Nice. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I, I spent a small fortune on this. I see that little cool card. looks like a MasterCard. Can I, can I take that down to the local store and buy some? <laughs> right, right. So you guys can find me. I'm um, instantbeautyllc.com. Uh -huh. And then also uh, my email is also the same instantbeautyllc at gmail.com. And then I have really cool products like this. Let me show you. What do you have? What do you, what do you have over there? I have masks. Look at that. Look oh, how cool that is. Look at you. I like, I like. And they can get, can they order those nice masks and everything online? Yep, they're on my website. I have some some brown ones. I have a black one here. Look at that. Look at that. I like them. Very yeah, nice. cute, right? <laughs> Very nice. Because you know, it's I think we're gonna have these masks for a while because things don't seem like they're gonna be changing just overnight. So they get an opportunity to to maybe go over and get some masks and everything. So y'all go buy some masks from Kayla and all that good stuff yeah. and let it remind you of what it takes to be a champion because she's done it, she's doing it. And I believe that she will definitely be a great inspiration to you. Kayla, in just a couple of minutes, where are you heading? I know you have this business. I know you're doing the grant writing, but what do you see? Where do you see yourself going in the future? What's Oh yeah. What Tell me yeah, about I, pre I appreciate you, you know, uh, obviously creating this platform for me, Rodney. I am so indebted to you. Um, you you're doing amazing work. You, you've single-handedly changed my life, uh, you know, with the, with the help of my tenacity and, you know, that go-getter attitude. But in the future, I'd love to have, um, you know, a staging company. Uh, I do well with interior design and, and personal styling. Like I mentioned, I've worked on photo shoots. I've been the creative director at Neiman Marcus, the merchandising manager at Victoria's Secrets. Um, <laughs> I'd love to have, you know, my own line of, you know, pillows and towels and comforters, you know, just really cool stuff around the house. I'm into decor. I love, you know, as you guys can see, you can't I see everything, see. but very nice. So that's really, that's really my element. Um, and eventually, you know, I'd love to be in, uh, get into real estate. I'm really interested right now in tiny homes and uh -huh. um, the container homes. I'm really yes, into been, that right I've now. I've been seeing those really yeah. interesting things. Yeah. So that's wow. where I, that's where I'm headed. Well, I'm I'm sure that we're going to see those things come and manifest themselves because you, between that journal and writing and visualizing and and taking action, I'm sure that you're going to do it. So. You guys reach out to a good friend, Kayla. And Kayla, I want to just give you a big salute for being a winner and doing all that you're doing. Thank you for sharing your story with us and keep on doing amazing things. I'm going to have you back in the future so you can come and give us an update and let us know some more of the wonderful things that are happening. And those of you that have found this story encouraging, write it down below, maybe send a message to her below. And uh, we look forward to continue to bring you some more good interviews like this. So with that being said, remember guys, I want you to be brave. I want you to be bold and I want you to keep on being brilliant and remember, take charge.